start off our kickoff event and welcome you all to the Climate Justice Green Heart Challenge. Absolutely. So my name is Robin Okinawa, and I'm the program coordinator for Captain Planet Foundation. We are here partnered with Clayton County Public Schools to bring Climate Justice Green Heart Challenge to all of you. And you all are very special because you were chosen to be here today. Your task today is to take everything that you learn from the people who are here for you. They're going to teach you about climate justice. They're going to teach you about democracy and energy and economy and so many more things. I want you to take that all in. I want you to absorb it. I want you to process it and unpack it. And then you're going to bring it to your classmates. Everything that you're here and hearing today and learning about is very important for you to give to all of your classmates because they didn't have the opportunity to be here. And what you're going to make sure that you do is understand how important and how relevant climate justice is to all of your lives. My um, middle school or my elementary school was actually Lake Ridge Elementary. So I am a Clayton County student alumni. And one thing that I noticed growing up on Riverdale Road was that my neighborhood and my opportunities and things that I had access to did not look the same as people who I ended up going to college with or people who I now interact with in my everyday life. And I started to think, why is that? And the reason for that is these underlying types of injustices that affect us as black and brown people in Clayton County. And it's not about anything that you do and it's not about who you are, it's just about the way that things are. But the beautiful thing about that is that you all have the power to change that. You all can put together solutions that are gonna have positive impacts on your community. And you all are here today to learn about those things and learn how to become effective change makers to make those things happen. So that's why we brought you all here today. That's why these speakers are here for you today. That's why you're gonna be learning about so many different things in a little bit amount of time. That's why we pulled you out of school so that you all could be here because you're learning about really, really important things that you're gonna bring back to your schools. So today is gonna to seem like, oh my gosh, am I in school right now? Kind of, every day is school, don't forget it. But definitely remember that the things that you're learning apply to you. They're about you as a person in your community. They're about you as a person who lives in Clayton County, in Atlanta, in Georgia, or wherever your family is from. And what we're trying to tell you is that anything that you have observed or seen in your community that you don't like, you have the power to change. So that's what today is the beginning of. And then over the course of the next about two, almost three months, you're going to be working with your teams. You're going to be working with your teachers. You're going to be working with some of the mentors that are actually here today to put together plans to solve those problems that you've addressed. So to kick this thing off, you all sort of already met Sophie, but I'm going to turn it over to Sophie to give you a brief presentation about how we're starting to be a very sustainable city in the city of Atlanta and how you can see those things taking place in your community. So please give me a very big, very loving round of applause for Sophie Armina Kean. Hello again, guys. I hope you all had fun. Um, we want to make recycling as fun as we can, and it's really awesome to be able to do that working with the Atlanta Hawks and State Farm Arena. Um, so here, okay, we're going to tell you a little bit of a story of um, what we do and what we're up to at the arena and what we've accomplished in the last three years working together because we're all part of the solution. This graph right here, what it tells us is by percentage, um, how much stuff goes to the landfill or is diverted from the landfill. Does that make sense? Um, so diverting from the landfill means either recycling it, composting it, donating it, but not sending it somewhere to a landfill because aluminum is infinitely recyclable. If you throw it in the right bin, it can be recycled over and over and over again. So we do that at the arena at a really large scale. We started our journey in 2019. We had a lot of room for opportunity, and now we consistently are diverting over 90%, which our team is so proud of, and there's so much hard work that goes on behind the scenes. So we're gonna share some of the fun things that we do to make that possible with our fans and our guests and all of you. Earlier this year, last year, our venue in Atlanta, Georgia, 
was certified as the first place in the world. There are 8 billion people in the world now. The first place in the world that's zero waste, which means very little goes to the landfill. Everything else is diverted, either recycled or composted. Here are some numbers that kind of talk about exactly what categories they go in, because we love data. It's important for us to study what we are doing, talking about it, and learning from it, and see how we can do better. Um, this is a lot of text, and it's not intended to be read, but we did some fun analogies. Um, you know, it's good to understand the volume of something or how much something is. So we have um, a statue outside of our um, arena. It's a Dominic Wilkins statue. He is one of our legends um, that used to play for us. And his statue weighs about 20,000 pounds. And in 2021, we recycled 122,000 pounds of cardboard. So that would be like six of his statues, when you think about how heavy that is, that all got recycled. So the cardboard was sent somewhere to be used to make another item. So the ways that we're able to do what we do is we have to make sure we enable everyone to do their part. So it's really important that you all who come into this room, if you have something to throw away that's recyclable, I have to make sure you have a place that you can do that. So we have to set the table and set you guys up for success. And we do that at our venue. What you guys see on the left is how it used to be. Now we pay attention and are intentional about where bins get placed. It's important that we're very intentional about that. And we now have a system with a label so it's easy for people to do their part. And, that, and here are just some examples of all of our team members working together to continue making improvements. You know, we said we were on a journey to become zero waste, but it's really a forever journey. There's no finish line in being sustainable. So here again, just pictures of our team members and ways we move things around to enable people to do their part, which is recycle. Some areas we studied and we realized, wow, we sure do go through a lot of batteries here. So maybe we put a bin here and put a label on it that's specific for the batteries. So that way our zero waste squad doesn't have to sort it later. It's really important to provide feedback. If you notice someone maybe did something incorrectly, they didn't know. So important that we take the time to educate and communicate. Communication is so important in operating sustainably. We make labels that are easy to understand and help everyone do their part. So we have these everywhere for our team members. This right here is some of our team members where we, you know, we not only have basketball games, we also do a lot of concerts. Um, and so we have stages that we have to build for people to come and perform. Who are some of your favorite artists here? Shout them out. Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish, I have something for you. Ooh, I have something for y'all. Okay. Okay, we have a variety. We love it. We see them all. Yeah? Okay. Well, music is awesome. Um, what you guys see right here, this is Brian, our sustainability manager. Uh, we bought a new stage. But our stage that we used to have, there was nothing wrong with it. We just wanted a new one. It was easier to build and break down and move and store. So we looked to see, what can we do with this stage? We were like, we could definitely sell it. But instead, we decided to donate it um, to a nearby school who now gets to use it for their activities. And, it didn't, and it's getting reused now. So those are ways to be a part of your community and be mindful about when you're getting rid of something, how that can help someone else maybe. We collect all the clean plastic film and take it somewhere because then that gets recycled. Remember we talked about the cardboard and the cardboard goes and becomes something new? Well, what's really cool is, does anybody know what circular economy means? Y'all heard that before? Oh, I got his hand, yes? Hmm? 
So I think it means like the same thing is used for multiple things. There's no break off and there's somewhere else. What's your name? You can go, can get used over and over and over again. So like aluminum is part of a circular economy that's infinitely recyclable. Cardboard can be recycled into a new product at least five to seven times. So it's part of that circular economy. It doesn't just end up in a landfill. It's then used to make something new. So good job. Let me give him a hat. Um, okay, you guys, somebody said Billie Eilish earlier. Y'all wanna hear something really, really neat? February 2nd, Billie Eilish came to Atlanta, Georgia for her concert. This was Billie Eilish's first ever zero waste show in her career here in Atlanta, Georgia. And it was a really big deal. And Billie's mom, she was so sweet. She came in the back where we do all of our sorting and she spent like 10 minutes with us. She recorded the process because Billie really cares. And it was important for them that where they're coming to do their show, that we did our part. And we were so excited to have her come to our venue. Um, here, we, you know, shout out to Amadi. She's come and been a, a zero waste ambassador for us. We basically get folks to come and be stationed nearby stations and advise people where it goes where. And sometimes we do a surprise and delight. So what that means is Zach comes up to the bin and properly throws away his, bin, his aluminum cup. I might walk up to Zach and go, oh my gosh, thank you so much for doing your part. We really appreciate that. And then we give him a gift, super random. He wasn't even expecting that. So what you guys see here, I'm just gonna fly through just photos of random people who they just came to have a good time. And the next thing you know, we stop them and are giving them something. You know, some artists even signed posters that we gifted them. Can you imagine you come to a Billy show and then you get a signed poster by her all because we saw you recycle? It was re it's, it's a really cool thing to do and it's a lot of fun and we hope to make our impact by making things that are really fun. Um, and then with that, we're just gonna end on something really fun we've come up with. And this is called, we're gonna all learn it together. So when you're at home or anywhere you are and you have a cardboard box that you're getting ready to recycle, it's really important that you time out, break it down, and then recycle. So say it with me. Time out, break it down, then recycle. So the reason we wanna break it down is so you, it, if you throw it in there big, it's gonna take up a lot of space. Then that plastic bag is gonna get full really fast. But if you break it down, it takes up less space and it's the right way of recycling. Do we have a volunteer who wants to come show us how to break this box down? You pick one. <laughs> the pressure is on you. Come on. All right, so we're gonna help her. We're gonna give her the chant. What is it? And with that, thank you so much, guys. All right, everyone. Good morning. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't have more energy than you all. Good morning. Good morning. 
Much better. So thank you guys so, so much for being here this morning. I am Janetta Greenwood, your science coordinator for the district. And I really, well, thank you. <laughs> I really, really wanted to create an experience for you guys today because honestly, you have a superpower. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, you have a superpower. And that superpower is all about making sure that you do your part to make sure this planet is here for your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren, and many, many, many generations beyond. So I really believe in what you can do, and I cannot wait to see the wonderful ideas that you guys are gonna come up with over the next couple of months. So my job right now is to really kind of tell you more about what I'm gonna expect you to do in the months of March and February, or February and March, okay? So as you heard from Sophie, they had a wonderful idea. And things are great as an idea, but they only are really relevant when you put them into action. So what we want you guys to do over the next couple of months is really use your brain to think about some great ideas and then put them into action so that you really do your part, okay? Because we choose now. Now is the time. We can't wait till somebody else solve this problem for us because if we really want to use our superpower that you all said you have, then we choose now to do it. Okay, so over the next couple of months, you're going to work with your classmates in no more than groups of, your group could be no more than five, so you could do smaller, and you're going to work with your classmates to come up with some wonderful change maker plans. Okay, now what has to be so special about these plans? What makes it special is you. You are coming up with something that maybe no one has thought about before, or you can come up with something that someone has thought about before, but you make it better. Because think about, we've had cars made since way, way, way back in history. But they've gotten what? Better and better and better because people have ideas of how to make it what? Better. So that's all we're asking for you. We're asking you either to come up with an original idea or come up with an idea and just make it better and make it work for your community. Now, what's so important about your community? Well. I don't know if you know this, but climate change impacts the entire world. Did you guys know that? Okay, it impacts the entire world. It impacts not just the US, it impacts countries that you can't even see, but it disproportionately impacts communities of color. Now, what do I mean by disproportionately impact? We're considered to be a minority population but the health risk and the landfills and the poor soil and not having access to fresh food, that happens more to minorities than it does to majority populations. So that's what we mean by disproportionately. Because if we're a smaller group of people, but it impacts us more, does that really make numerical sense to us? No. So we really, really, really have some work to do because we want to make sure that we build a better community for ourselves. Raise your hand if you love, love, love your family. Oh, I love it. Okay, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Don't take them down yet. Raise your hand if you love or like your teacher or your school. I said love or like your teacher or your school. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Raise your hand if you like your friends who live in your neighborhood. Okay? <laughs> Raise your hand if you like going to some fun activities where you live or in Atlanta. Okay. So what I want you all to see, you can put your hands down, that everybody loves something about their community. And if you love your community, you're going to do what's right so that your community could be there for future years to come. Okay? So that's all we're asking you to do. Come up with some wonderful ideas that is going to be best to do well for your That's where the Green Heart Challenge is all based on. The love that you have for not just yourself, but for others that you care about. So as you're going around to these different sessions today, don't think you have to do everything because you can't do everything, but you can do what? One thing. And I want you to think about what could be that one thing that you could commit to doing to make your community a better place. And so it may be something like the zero waste challenge, or you may decide to upgrade it and do something slightly different with your own spin to it. If you like technology, you may decide that you want to do something that, hey, I maybe want to build an app 
where people can scan and determine how to recycle something. So it's whatever your brain, which I think is the most powerful thing in this room right now, because you said you have superpowers that you can use to come up with that one idea to make this world a better place, okay? So as I stated before, you're gonna work in groups. So this is when you get back to your, um, your class and you're gonna share everything you learned today about how climate change disproportionately impacts communities of color, okay? And then from there, you're gonna come up with a pitch and tell us in a video about your plan to make it happen. And we wanna hear innovativeness, meaning I want to hear something different. Our winners last year, they came up with a school garden and you're thinking, oh, what's the big deal? Well, they came up with a way to not only produce fresh fruit and fresh food for their community, because we live in a food desert where there's just a lot of fast foods around us, but they also thought about, well, we need to make sure that communities can get this food. So that's what they, their innovativeness piece was around. They came up with a way to ensure that they not only grew the, um, the food, but they figured out a way to ensure that they can get it to the people in their community. So that is what I want from you all. But you cannot use the idea I just gave you, but you can upscale it. You can upscale it, okay? Or you may decide to do a fashion day. I love fashion. How many of you guys realize there are fashion companies that invest in this whole sustainability idea with using recyclable goods to make your clothes you wear. I'm wearing Adidas. They love to do that. A lot of their shoes are made from recycled products. Or maybe you're wearing clothes that maybe you didn't buy. Maybe it's like what we call upscale, meaning someone repurposed it and now you're wearing it and you chose not to throw it away. These are all things that you can do. We just wanna see what your brains come up with, okay? The deadline, for this is March 31st. And then after that, then we're gonna have another competition where you guys can come back, whoever wins at your school, so it may not be you, but it may be your classmates that you share the information with, but whoever wins, you're gonna come back and share that information and we're gonna have a wonderful celebration on the day of competition. I hope to see all of you there because I hope that you all submit and actually turn in something for this competition. And we have some wonderful, wonderful prizes in store. You'll get some grants, meaning some money to spend towards your idea. Oh, y'all like that. Okay, I saw that. <laughs> and also, you may even get a chance to do some internships this summer, summer, maybe working with Sophie and her team or with Captain Planet Foundation or even with me and my team. So you'll have opportunities to do some fun stuff this summer and also get some money to fund your idea if your idea wins, okay? So I want you guys to really, really, really think about this and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with, okay? We are working collaboratively with social studies, so is not just in your science classroom, it's also in your social studies classroom. Because in the word climate justice, I hear climate change and social justice. So do not think this is just a one content topic. You will be doing math when you do this, as well as ELA. Because in the real world, all subjects matter. And so you're gonna be using stuff that you're learning in all your classes to make this a reality for your community doing what you do with your wonderful superpower, okay? You guys excited? You ready to get started? Okay, all right. Well, we're gonna play some music right now and we're gonna start dismissing you so you guys can start um, going to your sessions. There will be a group that stays in here for lunch and then there will be a group that starts the rotation process. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with on March 31st. Good luck, you guys.
My name is Hermina and I am a native of Atlanta. I currently live on the Georgia coast where I work to protect the ocean and everything in the ocean from plastic pollution, offshore drilling, and um, protecting the animals. So, um, this morning, I'm going to be talking about democracy and labor. Can someone give me like a really, really simple, quick definition of democracy? I know you all are like the brightest of the brightest. Don't raise your hand all at once, but somebody tell me what democracy is. One, two, do, 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 do. A democracy is the power of the people to rule. So we live in a, in a democracy, and in this democracy, in the United States, it's about the people and their power to elect officials to govern our country the way we have elected them to do that. So what is democracy again? Uh, let's say it together. Let's say it together. and how they represent you as a person, as a citizen of this country, and your vote. That's why it's important when you see on the news, uh, people are talking about voting rights, people are talking about voter suppression. That is because in this representative government, your vote represents an idea, and that idea has to be carried forth by the people that your parents have elected. And you know what? One day, guess who's going to elect them? You. You are going to elect them. And you know what? Since we're talking about justice, we want to elect officials who are about justice. And in this democracy, you know what? If our elected officials do not represent the ideas of the masses of the people in this country, what do we do? We vote them out. It's very important that you understand the power of the vote. And, you know, I started off by saying that I'm from Atlanta. Can you name one thing that you may know that's like one of the most important things that Atlanta is known for? The Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Mercedes-Benz. State Farm Arena. Okay, now we go to people. Name a person for whom Atlanta stands for. You. Uh, Who was born here? That's like, was really? Okay, gotcha. Uh, what's your name? Jonathan. The Amigo. Okay, okay. I like the Amigos. I really do. I like the Amigos. But I'm going to give you a quote. And you what famous Atlantan said this? I still have a dream. A dream deeply rooted in the, what? No, 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 no. Deeply rooted in the American dream. One day this nation will rise up and live out, live up to its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all human beings, every last one of you, are created equal and you deserve a right to a bright future. You deserve a right to clean water. You deserve a right to land free of chemicals. You deserve a right to clean air. You deserve a right to anything that you can dream about. On the count of three, everybody tell me who said this. One, 
two, three. <laughs> awesome. That is so awesome. So here's a quote that Dr. Martin Luther King said in regard to democracy. If democracy is to have breath of meaning, it is necessary to adjust this inequity. It is not moral, but it is also intelligent. We are wasting and degrading human life by clinging to the archaic thinking. In 1964 and 1965, there were two key pieces of legislation that turned this country around. Because before 1865, here in this country that was founded by the exploitation of human labor, before that time, people of African descent were enslaved. Native Americans were discriminated against. And so it took 100 years from 1865 all the way up to 1965 to pass a voting rights act that will protect your right to vote, that will protect you from discrimination at the voting polls. And you know what? It is a, an issue in which African Americans were the center of that inequity that existed in our country. It's for everybody. The benefit of it is for everybody. It doesn't matter where you were born, where you came from, where your parents came from. You are a beneficiary of the Voting Rights Act. You are also a beneficiary of the Civil Rights Act, which guaranteed you citizenship and protection against uh, uh, discrimination and violence because you know what was happening before 1964 and 1965? People were being harmed. Violence was get, being thwarted uh, upon people in ways that you cannot even imagine. And even so today, where there are situations like George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, they had the right to exist and be protected by the law. And so right here today, you have the power, you have the voice, you are the present generation who is going to revolutionize this country, make it live out the true meaning of this creed that all humans, men, women, boys, girls, cis, trans, all of them, that you have a right to be here. You have a right to be here. Say, I have a right to be here. I have, I have a right to be here. I have a right to be here. Louder. I have a right to be here. I have a right to be here. And so with that, I want you to remember that civil rights and democracy have gone hand in hand. And it's black and brown people who have deserved the kind of uh, organizing, mobilizing, and uh, action to ensure that you have the right. We're going to talk about labor. Who knows what labor is? And I'm not talking about your mama being and having a baby. <laughs> who knows what labor is? Brown coat. Uh, labor is when people like work too hard. Labor is work. Yeah, and, and working hard is a good example. What's your name? Of that about working too hard. About uh, climate, about justice and labor. Is that this country is founded on a set of rules and a set of laws that has created a system over time in which a few benefit from those laws. And the majority who did not benefit from those laws uh, were overworked, exploited, their gifts and talents were used behind, beyond measure to the point that you are work so hard that you don't have enough time to dream. You don't have enough time to imagine. 
You don't have enough time to think about what your life could be because this system that wants to overwork us is, is working you to the point that um, you're beyond tired, like Nia said. You're tired. And not only that, they want to pay you little wages. I believe that every last one of you in here have this magnificent gift and that once you use those gifts to give to this world, that your labor will be seen as valuable and that your labor and in doing your labor, what your gift is, you will be compensated. You will be paid your value and your worth because every last one of you are valuable. This world cannot get along without you. And so as we think about labor, I want you to think about um, what it means to power this country in such a way that people are a part of what keeps this country going. Some of the things that people suffer from is like low wages, no benefits. Um, what are some other things that you can think of when it comes to uh, your job? What's your name? Chapman. Chapman, what are, what are some issues that you can think about? Um, you don't get recognized. Oh. Man, say that louder, Chapman. You don't get recognized. You don't get recognized for the value that to uh, any business that you do. So how, how would we solve that problem? Who has a, a, a way, just very quickly thinking of, you're working for a company, you're giving that company your all, and you're not, uh, who has a solution for that? What's your name? Yes. What's your name? Briley. Uh, what's your solution, Briley? I'm sorry. Bigger ideas to get you recognized. Who else had their hand up? Speak out. Speak out. Your voice is power. And if we work collectively and enough of us speak out, we can go to the corporations and the heads of these businesses and say, we've all been talking. We've all been talking, and together we believe that our voices need to be heard. Yes, what's your solution? Uh, to make your job be louder and get your, get, get your job recognized by the government. He said get your job recognized by the government. Great idea. So when we talk about democracy and labor, I want to leave you with this idea. <clears throat> Martin Luther King Jr. said, no work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. And I know that you are the power that this country needs and that you will be the generation, you are the generation that has dignity and is important. And when it comes to the kind of justice that's needed in this country, you're part of that solution. Thank you all. Give yourselves a hand. Are there any questions? <laughs> All right. It's been real. No question. I was just curious to say you were like a coach. Yes. Yes. I have a question, but I like your hair. Thank you. So my hair represents the ocean waves. Since that's the work that I do, I live by the way, protecting the ocean. You have a question? She said, does my outfit represent anything? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Yes, it does. And I kept stepping on my earrings. So these earrings are from Nigeria. This necklace is from a friend of mine who went to Kenya. And these bracelets are from South Africa. So when we talk 
talk about the kind of justice that's needed in this world, it's not just the United States. There is an entire black global diaspora that from Africa and other places in the country. So the kind of justice, social justice, and environmental justice that's needed is needed everywhere. Because injustice doesn't know boundaries. It doesn't know that, you know, there are lines that separate Alabama from Georgia. Air is free. It just goes anywhere. So everybody deserves that. Yes, and this is the last question. Is a country in East Africa. Thank you all so much. Thank you. The good one. Oh, do I have Lake Ridge in the house? Yes. yes. Let's go. Yes, I did go to Lake Ridge. Um, I grew up literally the next neighborhood over. That's where I grew up. So we're family in here. That's very exciting. Um, the reason I think it's important to share that, just on a personal note, is because my entire climate justice journey started because I grew up in Riverdale. I was very much a kid who um, didn't love seeing pollution and I didn't like seeing people just throw garbage. Um, I really took pride in where I grew up and I loved that I had a cool community and I loved playing outside. And then it got to a point where my mom would say, Rami, you can't go outside today. Like the air quality is not good. And I was like, what is air quality? What are you talking about? I didn't know what she meant. And there was a time when my mom was buying bottled water a lot. And I was like, mom, bottled water is terrible. This was even way back when, y'all. I did not want my mom buying bottled water. And she said, well, we have, a, we have a burn notice on our, a boil notice on our water. We can't drink our water right now. And as a kid who didn't really have an understanding of what climate change was or understanding of environmental science or things like that, it didn't really make sense to me um, until... I was able to sort of understand that what I was having at that time was feeling these sort of like climate anxiety feelings. Have you guys ever heard of climate anxiety? No. Yes and no, until now. <laughs> climate anxiety is feeling a little bit scared or feeling worried about the way that our environment is. And uh, as you guys are growing up, it's becoming way more relevant of kids who are feeling that way. And that's totally okay to feel that way. And the reason that it's okay is because all of you have the ability to do something about it. 
So I'm here today to talk to you about the land and water pillars, um, which fall under the Earth planetary element. So I work with Captain Planet Foundation, which is based on a cartoon back in the 90s. None of you were alive. <laughs> you were? Okay, our teachers were. I, was, I can't talk because I was barely alive. <laughs> the cartoon had five planeteers from five different continents, and all of them had superpowers, just like you guys. The Earth superpower had power over the Earth and the soil and all of the things that were on land. And what are some of the things that come from the land? Can anyone tell me? Yeah. Soil. Soil, for sure. You can just scream it out. Grass. Grass. Plants. Plants. Trees. trees flowers. flowers. I'm looking for one thing in particular. Fruits, yes, our food. We have all of our food and everything that we rely on comes from the land, which means we need to protect those things. And all of those things rely on water. water, exactly. So we also have to protect our water. On top of that, what do we need to stay alive? Water, water exactly. So if we don't have clean drinking water, we're going to have a hard time staying healthy and staying alive, right? Yes. Exactly. So these are two pillars that I think are very important to us in particular because they relate so much to our everyday lives. You're always going to be eating or drinking something. You're always going to need water. But as climate change gets worse, we're going to have more issues with our food and our water. Climate change is affecting certain crops and where they grow and when they grow. So we might not have access to those crops. Climate change is causing major floods like in California or in Mississippi. And on top of that, we have some laws or some underlying structures in place that aren't very just, right? We have problems with social justice all over the world still. So things like Flint, Michigan, who knows about Flint, Michigan? Your dad lives there? Did he have to drink bottled water for a little bit of time? Yeah. Do you wanna tell everyone why? Um, shoot, this is like a long time ago he told me. I kind of remember a little bit, but I kind of denied. Yeah, that's all right. So, what's your name? Ashton. So Ashton's dad lives in Flint. And the reason that I asked if he had to drink bottled water for a little bit of time is because the decision makers, the people who are supposed to be making good choices for the people of Flint, decided to switch their water source to the Flint River knowing that the underlying pipes of the front liver were old and they were also made of lead. Lead is something that you should not ever, 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 ever consume because it's not good for you. Say it again. It's actually not in pencils. You know what's in pencils? What is it? It's called graphite. Ask your science teachers about it. It's called graphite. But lead, the actual chemical PB, is something that you should never take in because it's really bad for your brain, it's really bad for your heart, it's really bad for your body. So land and water are two pillars that I think you guys can look around your communities, you can observe things around you, you can say, I see some injustices here. I can see where my land and my water are not being protected. I can see where people are having issues with climate change in their land and their water. So hopefully those are things that you can sort of visually look at and start to understand how climate justice applies to some of those matters. So if your dad was drinking bottled water for a little bit of time because he wasn't able to drink the water that came out of the tap, that's something that everyone should have access to. Everyone should have access to clean water. It's a human right. Same with food, same with our soil, same with what happens with our food after we don't eat it. After you don't eat your food, do you think about what happens to it? It becomes rotten. It becomes rotten. Yes, it does become rotten. But it also can have some very good properties after you're done with it because you can turn it into, does anybody know? <laughs> yes, yes, you can have leftovers, which I am a big proponent of. But also when you put it in with some leaves and some dirt, it becomes fertilizer and compost. Exactly. So. Someone earlier mentioned circular economy. We started talking about how we can turn things that are waste back into things that we can use. Um, so thinking about how we can recycle our water and recycle our food are also ways that we can integrate climate justice because we don't have unlimited resources on our planet. It would be cool if we did, but we don't.
So we have to take care of all of the things that we have on the planet, including our land and our water. So who is starting to like the idea of land and water for their climate justice project? All right, we got a few hands, we got a few hands. Did any of you have any idea about land and water climate injustices before today? Love that. Okay, good. So we have some learning here. We have some learning happening. I love it. Love when that happens. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question. Yeah. So she asked, if I threw mango peels out in my backyard, will it help? I would say yes and no. You're not hurting anything by throwing the mango peels out because they're going to decompose. So it's not like they're going to be breaking down for hundreds of thousands of years like plastic wood or like aluminum wood. So you're not negatively impacting your backyard. However, I will say, if you're looking for something to do with your food scraps, the best thing to do is actually put it into a, a put together compost so that you can turn those food scraps and leaves and whatever other scraps you're throwing in there into a healthy and nutrient rich soil. So if you wanna start a compost, that is a really good project I do. I didn't say that out loud. Um, <laughs> So if yeah yeah so if we're looking for something positive and something um, to to go from one thing to the next starting a compost and understanding what makes a nutrient rich compost and how to do that is a really good thing to look into um, rather than just like throwing your food scraps out does that make sense gotcha did I have any other questions from anyone we talked about a lot does anyone live by a farm. No. You live by a farm? Yeah. What, how big is the farm? Is it pretty big? With like animals and crops and stuff like that? Have you ever eaten anything from the farm? Awesome. What kinds of things do they have on the farm? Vegetables and fruits? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I don't necessarily live by one, but Every time I go to school, like we drive past it, all we see is like horses, pigs, cows, okay. donkeys, and lambs, and stuff like that. That might be someone's little, you know, petting zoo or something like that. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I live by a wheat farm. Okay. A wheat farm. That's cool. And my, they're, they're my, our neighbors, you know, be nice. Do they make you bread? No, they gave us cookies. Oh, there you go. So... People who live by a farm might understand a little bit more how things grow from our land and need healthy soil and water to grow, right? And then they make th the things that we need, and that includes animals and plants. So that's really important to see and to understand. Who wants to be a farmer when they grow up? You do? That's awesome. Uh, I know it's like you might think I'm joking, but farmers are so, so important to our climate and to our environment right so it's a really cool thing and we were supposed to have a farmer for you today but he wasn't able to make it but he is going to be here tomorrow and we're going to record all the things he says so that you'll have time to see it and to hear about how cool it is to be a farmer and you could be a farmer in georgia and you could be a farmer in another state so you have lots of options yeah she does you have a garden in your backyard what are you growing there that's good that's really good my mom grows a lot of tomatoes she loves you don't like tomatoes tomatoes are good you like tomatoes yeah and did she eat all of it that's awesome. Does, how many people know or have gardens in their homes? That's amazing. So you guys are really close in getting to touch and plant things and understanding the soil and understanding how, let's say you're growing tomatoes, but it's really cold in the summer, your tomatoes aren't gonna grow, right? Or if your bell peppers or other things that you're growing, if something happens with the climate, they're not gonna grow the way that they should. So it's cool that you have an understanding of that, yeah. If 
you put them in a greenhouse, would they be able to grow? They would be able to grow. Yes, if you put them in a greenhouse, would they be able to grow? Do you know why that is? You want to ask for help? You want to pick someone? Um, I think we'll go in a greenhouse because they're getting sunlight and water in the soil. There's another big reason why they would grow in a greenhouse. So he said because they're getting sunlight and water and good soil. Why else? Let's just someone to have it. Go ahead. Climate control. Climate control. So how many people have heard of the greenhouse effect? Yes. So the greenhouse effect is one of the things that cause climate change. The greenhouse effect is basically like imagine Earth and Earth has an atmosphere. So imagine Earth is inside a greenhouse. The sun is beaming on Earth and the sun's heat is bouncing off the surface of Earth out into the atmosphere. But the heat is not leaving. So as we have more and more sunlight going in and, com and not coming out of the Earth's atmosphere, you have other things that are making it even warmer. So things such as, and when energy and economy comes in here, they're going to talk more about that. But let's say that you have a bunch of cow farms. So we're doing a lot of deforestation and we're getting, a, getting rid of a lot of things that take in CO2. So now we have all this extra CO2 or carbon dioxide in our atmosphere and carbon dioxide actually makes the air warmer, yeah. right? So if we have a way more CO2 than was originally in the air because we're getting rid of all of our trees and we are getting rid of our open and undeveloped spaces to put in these big high rises and concrete, we're increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and we're making it warmer and that's making climate change worse. So when you put things in a greenhouse, what it does is increase the heat in there and it makes it a little bit more humid, a little bit more hot. So if there's something that likes that environment, it'll grow. But humans, we don't need that. <laughs> we don't want to increase our CO2. So we want to make sure that we are protecting all of our natural land and water so that we can have a stable climate rather than the really in high increase of CO2 and warming that we have currently. Uh, you have about three minutes. All right, we have three more minutes. Yes, ma'am. What does the symbol on the water mean? So these are symbols from something called the Black Climate Mandate. And it's like a big document that a bunch of um, scientists and social justice advocates and really people who are just passionate about climate justice put together. And what it is, the symbols themselves, I think they just kind of like art symbols. Um, but the Black Climate Mandate itself is a list of demands that um, the black scientists and social justice advocates have for, for um, legislators, so people who write laws, um, people who are in government, people who own businesses. Um, and what it's asking basically is that we start to protect our climate and our environment because there are like BIPOC communities who are being harmed by it. Um, so it's one of the many um, documents out there that's just advocating for climate justice. Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. And you'll see some other symbols throughout the rest of the day. So you can learn what those are about and learn some other aspects or some other pillars that are involved in climate justice. Did you have a question? No? Yeah. Um, so Basically, what I'm here, I did a science project. It was based on GMO. Mm -hmm. Is GMO bad or is it good? So she asked um, that she, the reason that she's here is because she did a science project about GMOs. And she asked if GMOs are good or bad. And I'm not going to fully answer that question because I definitely think it's something that you should research. Um, what was your project about? Uh, can GMO produce more food. Can GMOs produce more food? So there's lots of, and if you don't know what GMO means, it means a genetically modified organism. So it just means that a scientist has done something to a seed or to a plant or to an animal. Um, so it's not the way that it was produced in nature, but it's a little bit genetically modified. Um, and so you'll sometimes see food packaging. It says no GMOs or GMO free or things like that. Um, so that is something that you could look into. And it does really relate to the land pillar and the food and soil and the crops and the plants and the seeds that we plant. 
um, and definitely something you should do research into. I, you might start Googling GMO and there'll be like a lot of science papers. So maybe Google GMO for kids. Um, not that you're kids, but just so you can find articles and other documents that you can read. Um, and it's, I would say a lot of people are pretty split about it. So that's not a bad idea for a science project, but I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much for having me. It was so wonderful talking with you all. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you guys learned so much. I hope you enjoy your lunch. Thank you, thank you guys. Have a great day. Oh, God, I'm... Ears up. Right. Hold on, I gotta wait for the cue. How are you guys? Good. It's warm in here. All right, we're good? All right, my name is Courtney. I, uh, I work for Virginia Tech. Uh, as a professor in the College of Natural Resources, I also work for the Captain Planet Foundation. Um, and I am going to hear, I'm rounding out this rotation, talking about energy and economy. So you guys have heard from Robin, right, about land and water. You've heard from Hermina about labor and democracy. Yes. What would you think of that? Yes. Yeah. And now you're going to hear from me about economy and energy. These are six words. Right? Does anybody know what these six words have in common or what they are, what, what we're talking, why we have these six words that we're talking about, these six icons? 
There's been two in each, each speaker has had two with them. Anybody know what it has to do with, yes? All of them is something about, something about Earth. Yeah, something about Earth. Yeah. Yeah, energy works on Earth. That's what I'm going to be talking about. But what do all six of these things have in common? Yes. With economy, uh, mine. This one will. Yep. I feel like it all like revolves around the Earth and how uh, you have to keep everything safe and how um, you have the right to use the trash um, and like all different kinds of stuff that I have to do. Yeah. Yeah, so all six of these pillars, and I'll come back to you, all six of these pillars are what we call the pillars of climate justice, right? And so these are all, if you guys have ever used a, micro, a, a, a magnifying glass? Yes. Okay, so they're like lenses, right? You can look at things through different lenses and different magnifying glasses. All of these are different lenses that we need to be looking through at problems that we see in our community, right? And seeing, are there, is this fair? Is this just? Is everybody being treat, treated equally? Right. So when we talk about land and, and water, it was about like whose water is clean and whose is not. Who's getting good food and who is not. Are we all getting access to good, healthy, clean food? Right. When, when we're talking about energy and economy here, we're going to be talking about climate justice and how it relates to making sure that everybody's benefiting right, from energy. Everybody has access to energy and that the energy that we create and that we sell through our economy isn't hurting us. Right, so I said that I, um, in addition to work, working to, with Captain Planet Foundation, I am a professor at Virginia Tech. Has anybody ever heard of Virginia Tech yeah. University? Go Hokies? Yeah. No, they're not very good, so we don't. <laughs> but I do work for Virginia Tech, and I am a professor in the College of Natural Resources. Does anybody know what that term means, natural resources? Um, like, uh, like solar power? So, kind of, yeah, we're, we're on the right hand. Well, just a broader definition of, of natural resources. Uh, like natural resources, like using something around you, like something? Yeah, it's things around us, right, that come from nature that we use to make things or to do things, right? So what's an example of a natural resource? Like plants, farming. Yeah, plants are a natural resource. What's another one? I'll give you a hint. There's this. What is that? Wood. Wood. That's one. Absolutely. I'll give you another hint. Where's my water bottle? It's over there. But imagine it, right? Water. Water. Absolutely. And the water bottle is metal. So like metals. What's another one? Coal. Coal. Absolutely. Coal is a natural resource. Yes. Fire. Fire is kind of, right? Like we use energy. We use things to start a fire. We use natural resources like wood to start a fire. But the fire itself is the other thing I want to talk about, which is energy. Right? So can somebody describe, you just, you, you led us into it. Great segue. Do you know what energy is? Pick a friend to help you out. Call a friend. How about him back here? He looks like he knows what energy is. Energy is the thing that powers most of the things here, like cars, oil for energy. Yeah. And some electric cars need energy from solar panels or windows. Absolutely, right? So what we're talking about energy broadly is the ability to do work, right? It's the it's it's we need energy. How do we get energy to walk and to do things? By sleeping. And Right. We use we use calories to burn to energize ourselves. Right. When you were talking about uh, back there, our, what is our what's what's our friend's name? Tyler. Taylor. Taylor mentioned a whole bunch of, of forms of energy that we use in this building. Right. Think about your day. Think about your day so far. It's like 12, 15, 12, 20. What different forms of energy have you used today so far or and sources of energy that you've used? Yes. Um, like, like you use like your um, energy source. Yeah, but well, like, give me an example. Did you cook breakfast today, or did somebody cook you breakfast? Um, like, I kind of cook breakfast. Okay, so you used heat to make breakfast, right? That's an energy source. Yes. What? It's like. Well, 
Do you want me to say scientifically? No, just just give me a thing that you've used energy on. The sun. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, the sun does. Absolutely, the sun gives you energy. You got vitamin D, right? So you, the sun is a huge source. We'll talk about that in a second. Yes. Hmm. Your toaster. You plugged in your toaster. You got toast, right? So it was using heat and electricity. Think about this building. We probably also used. How did you get here? A car. A car. You got here by a bus or a car. Did that car or bus use energy? Yes. yes. Does anybody know what kind of energy it used? Or where its energy source was? A gas, probably, right? It was probably a diesel-fired uh, bus to get here, right? So you mentioned the sun. You've mentioned, somebody mentioned diesel, right, electricity. What are different sources of energy? So you said the sun is a big one, right? The sun is a big source of energy. Yes? Land. Kind of. What? Are we getting something from land? Water can be a source of energy, right? Think about a wind, like a water mill or a hydroelectric plant. That, that powers, that gives us power. What else? A windmill. A windmill. Absolutely, wind gives us power. That was her. Oh, she took it. Yes. Food is is an energy source for us. Absolutely. Yes. Happiness. <laughs> Happiness. Absolutely. That is it. It feeds our soul, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All of this is using electricity, right? So when we think about, you guys have computers, right? They have a battery? So a battery, what does a battery do? Charge it. It stores power, right? But then when that battery dies, what do we need to do? Charge it. Charge it. We need to plug it into the wall, right? So we've mentioned a whole bunch of different um, energy sources. We mentioned water and wind and solar. We also mentioned coal and diesel. What's the difference between solar and wind and water and something like coal and fossil fuels? They're in two different categories. Can anybody guess what the category is? Um, a solar panel is used by the sun's energy. Mm -hmm. And what is the sun? Yeah. Are we ever going to run out of sunlight? No. Probably not, right? Are we ever going to run out of wind? No. Probably not. Are we ever going to run out of water? Water in, in different forms, in different forms, but the water cycle, right? We're always going to have water. It just may be vapor. It may be underground. It may not be accessible, but we'll always have water. Are we always going to have coal? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Are we always going to have fossil fuels? Mm. So what is, what is the difference between those two things? I'll give you, a, I'll start it. Re, mm. Re somebody said it. Recycle. Not recycle. Reuse. Not reuse. Reuse. Renewable. Someone said it. So renewable resources are things that we have an infinite supply of, right? What is so then by by deduction, what's a non-renewable? Something that you can only use one time. Yeah, something we can only use once and it's gone, right? So when we think about fossil fuels and coal. That, what, does anybody know what fossil fuels are? Uh, yeah? A type of gas. It is a type of fuel, but you know what it is? It's dead dinosaurs. Yeah. What? It's, yeah, fossil fuels are a whole bunch of old dead things that have been buried under the ground for thousands, if not millions of years, right? And they've been compressed into really compact things. And all of that stuff is, does anybody know what all of that stuff is made of? It starts with a C. It makes up everything on Earth. Cells? It's everywhere around us. Close, not cells. Car carbon. Carbon. carbon, right? It's carbon. It's ca well, carbon, right? So when we pull up fossil fuels, we pull all those dead dinosaurs up from under the ground, and to make energy, what do we do? We burn them, right? We burn all these fossil fuels, and what does that release? Car somebody said it over there, carbon dioxide, right? So when we're talking about climate change and climate justice and all of this stuff, the big thing to keep in mind as far as energy and economy is we're pulling, up, we've built our society based on non-renewable resources, which is silly because we have so many renewable resources available to us that are so much more efficient, so much more powerful, right? But instead we've decided it's easier and it's probably more lucrative for somebody, right? Because you can't control the sun. 
Nobody owns the sun, but somebody can own a well of, of gas, right? So it's, it's more lucrative and it's, we've, we've created this whole system where we pull fossil fuels out of the ground, we burn them, and we release that carbon into the atmosphere. And what is that causing? It's causing the, the climate to change, right? There is, carbon is normal, Car carbon isn't bad. Carbon's everywhere, it's good. But when we've released more into the atmosphere than is normal, it's causing problems. Does anybody know what the greenhouse effect means? Has anybody ever been in a greenhouse? Oh yeah? What is, so what is the, has anybody been in a greenhouse? What is it? It's like a house that protects the plants. It's, what, when you walk into a greenhouse, what do you feel? Warm. warm. Oh, you feel nice and warm, right? Because a greenhouse is built to trap heat. Right? And the sun comes through the glass and the other plants inside can grow faster because they're warmer. Right? The same thing is happening with the atmosphere and it's normal. We need the greenhouse to keep us all alive. If we didn't have the greenhouse around the planet Earth, we'd be freezing. We'd probably be dead. Right? But we have a greenhouse effect and that's all the gases and stuff in the atmosphere that heat up, the sun heats up, and it keeps us nice and warm. The problem is that we've decided to take up all of the carbon that would ordinarily be stored underground because things die and they get buried and that's where it stays. But if we pull it up out of the ground and we burn it, we're putting it into the atmosphere. So now we have too much carbon, it's getting too warm and the climate is changing. So that's essentially what climate change is. Now, we just talked about renewable energy and non-renewable energy sources. Is any of this a mystery? No. None of it's a mystery, right? None of it's magic. The good news is that we have all of the technology we need. We have all the knowledge we need to be able to transition from re non-renewable energy to renewable energy. So the challenge that you guys have in this, in this climate justice challenge is to think about what are things in your community that we can do to transition from a climate change, burning sort of bad decision-making society to better decisions. And how can those things benefit everybody? Everybody equally. How can they, you make sure that your community is benefiting? So if you think about clean energy, think about clean transportation. I don't know if you guys saw this, but your school district, Clayton County Public Schools, received a big grant from the federal government to start buying electric vehicles, electric school buses. Uh, one electric school bus costs the same as three regular school buses. So one of the things that we can talk about when we think about climate justice is Cleaner sometimes is more expensive, right? So one of the questions we have to figure out with climate justice is how do we make it so everybody has access to those same options, that everybody can benefit from the technology that we have. The other thing to keep in mind as you're developing your solutions is that can we just switch out a, a diesel bus with an electric bus? No. no. When you think about your phone or your computer, what happens when it dies? What do you have to do? When you think about your electric school bus, what do you have to do? So we also need to be thinking about the, does anybody know this word? It's called, it starts with an I. It's about all the systems that we need to be able to support the big solutions. Infra, infrastructure. Has anybody ever heard that word? No. Infrastructure is like all the systems that we need to make sure that we can support the solutions that we want. So that means charging stations for electric vehicles. If we're talking about bicycling or walking, is there infrastructure that we need to make sure everybody can walk safely? Yeah, we need sidewalks. We need crosswalks, right? We need crossing guards. We need signs. There are all these parts of the solution. So I will leave you with this. Part of your challenge or your challenge for the, for this, for, for the climate justice um, challenge and summit is identifying a problem in your community that you can address that has to do with climate justice and has to do with either energy and transportation or with food and soil and trees and stuff like that. Those are the two categories. When you're thinking about your solutions, yes, the big pieces are important, but all the little pieces that make the big piece possible are also super important. And you can't do it all. So the, the key to success is picking your piece of the puzzle. So if you decide to focus on walking transportation and you really wanna focus on making sure that we have good signs so nobody gets hurt, maybe he's gonna work on crosswalks. Maybe she's gonna work on sidewalks. Right? Maybe you guys are all going to work together to develop the solution. She's like, no. Um, <laughs> right? But the, the key is to pick your piece of the puzzle. Oh, sorry, I just grabbed the microphone. Um, and, and work together and to develop these big solutions. All right. Thoughts, questions, concerns, outrage about anything I just said?
ideas. All right. We're yes. So, if, uh, let's say somebody has a lot and they're only going to, can we still use that in the I I missed the question. Sorry, is that one more time? I said, like, if someone dies and their body decomposes and there are only the bones left, can we use that also? <laughs> for the challenge or in general? For energy? Not really. No, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah? Got it? So.
air and water and land.
stronger communities and more resilient communities, but how to make our planet better. And we can do that with you if you're an athlete. We can do that with you if you just want to go to school and make good grades. But I encourage all of you to have a defining moment to listen to what was taught you today, get to know the people around you, and understand that people have different struggles. And our job is to make sure that your struggle is based upon a lack of us doing our job. I thank you so much for your attentiveness. But I really, really, one day I can sit in an audience just like this and watch one, two, 10 of you give the same speech I'm giving. So thank you all so much and have a wonderful day, okay? Thank you. All right, well, let's give another round of applause for everyone who gave their time to you today. Thank you so, 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 so much. I am here. Uh, hello. We got pretty Tammy the DJ over here. Hello. So I definitely want to make sure that all of you are expressing your gratitude to your teachers and to everyone around you. What is going to happen now is Miss Greenwood is going to tell everyone what to do. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for being so attentive today. I think you guys are going to come up with some wonderful ideas. We had to cut it short, um, as Robin pointed out, because of climate change technically, because we have some bad weather coming this way. So we have early dismissal. So thank you for being flexible. We did not forget that some of you have not eaten. So we will make sure on your way out, you will get your box lunch. The only rule is you cannot eat it on the bus because I don't want the bus drivers mad at me, okay? So you cannot eat it on the bus, but as soon as you get back to school, guess what you can do? You can eat it, okay? So I promise, I promise. So we'll make sure that you're going to get those box lunches so that you can get on the bus and get back to school safely. Now, I need a promise from everybody in here. Everybody quiet. When you get back to school, you're supposed to do something very special. Does anybody remember what it is? You remember? Say it on the mic. Uh, uh, submit your video. Well, not submit your video yet, but there is something very special I need you to do. But before you get to that part, I need you to... Tell your classmates about what you learned today. Say it louder. Tell your classmates about what you learned today. Tell your classmates about what you learned today, okay? Because in order to submit the video, they have to know about the information, okay? So I really, really need you guys to keep that promise for me. Can you do that? Uh, oh, I don't believe you. Can you do that? Okay, okay, okay. So we will make sure that you get everything you need to be very, very thoughtful and creative to actually design these great plans, but I just need you to do what you just promised for me, okay? So in a minute, we are going to start dismissing you, but I do not want anyone getting up until you hear your school called, because that means your bus is out there ready for you. So while we're waiting for your buses to get here, we'll make sure you get your box lunches, but do not what? Eat it, okay? You gotta eat it when you get back to your school. And DJ Pretty Tammy, can you drop that beat? <laughs> okay. 